So what is PromQL? Well, it's short for Prometheus Query Language, and it's the main way to query metrics within Prometheus. So you'll send a request to the Prometheus server, provide your specific PromQL expression, and it's going to return the data for that expression. And the data that you get returned can be visualized in dashboards, whether that's through Grafana or some of the built-in dashboarding tools with Prometheus. And you can also use PromQL to build alerting rules to notify administrators when certain thresholds have been crossed. And so in this section, we're going to cover a lot of different things. This is going to be one of the larger sections. We're going to go over the different expression data structures, what they can return. We're going to cover different selectors and modifiers so that we can get the exact data that we're interested in. So when you run a PromQL expression, what gets returned from the Prometheus server can be one of four types. The first one is a string, which is a simple string value, which is currently unused. You have a scalar, which is a numeric value, so some floating point value. You have an instant vector, which is a set of time series containing a single sample for each time series, all sharing the same timestamp. And a range vector is a set of time series containing a range of data points over time for each time series. So let's go over a string. Now, as I mentioned, a string is just a simple string value, and it's currently unused, but it would just be some random text like that. A scalar is going to be a simple numeric floating point value. So something like 54.743 or 127.43. So it's just some number. An instant vector is going to return a set of time series containing just one single sample for each time series, all sharing the same exact timestamp. So if we perform this query, which is just taking the name of a metric we're interested in and then just querying it using that, Prometheus is going to return the following data. So what it does is it finds this specific metric with all of its unique labels. And remember, every combination of metric and unique labels is going to be one time series. So we have four total time series. And we're going to get the specific value for each one of these time series. Now, the specific or the most important thing about instant vectors is the timestamp. So it's going to return one single sample for each time series. And they're all going to be at the same exact timestamp. So for each time series, we're going to get the data at one specific point in time, which is at March 3rd, 11.05 AM, the same timestamp. And so it's going to just return a single point in time, whatever the value of the metric is. Now, range vector is going to be a little bit different. A range vector is going to return a set of time series containing a range of different data points over time for each time series. So if we run the same query for the same metric, but this time we do this bracket and then 3M and then close bracket, what this means is I want to get this metric data, not just for a single point in time, but for the past three minutes. And that's what this means, the 3M. So what is going to return is something like this. So you're going to get the metric and you're going to get the unique combination of labels. And remember, Every metric with combination of unique labels is a time series. So in this example, there's two time series it returned. You're going to get the value and a timestamp. Now where it differs is you're going to get more than one timestamp and value. So it's actually going to return all of the values and timestamps that it got for the past three minutes. So it looks like it scraped this specific server three times in the past three minutes. It just so happened I just used three as an example. It can be more than that. It can be less than that. And for the other time series, we're going to get the values at the same exact time. So we got it at 805, 806, 807, and you can see the same thing at 805, 806, 807. So we get the value for this metric at those three data points. And so it's going to contain all data during that three minute window. And that's really the main difference between a range vector and an instant vector. A range vector is going to return metrics over the course of a certain period of time, in this case, three minutes. So in this video, we're going to discuss selectors and matches. Now, when you perform a query and you provide a metric name, in this case, node file system available bytes, what's going to happen is it's going to, by default, if you provide just the metric name, it's going to return all time series with that metric. Now, let's say that we don't want all of the time series to be returned, and maybe we just want a specific subset. We can filter out the time series that gets returned by using label matchers. 
Label matchers allow us to match specific labels of time series that we're actually interested in. And there's a couple of different matchers that we have. So the first one is going to be the equality matcher, which is going to look for a specific match on a label value. We have the negative equality matcher that returns a time series that don't have that specific label. We have a regular expression matcher, which matches time series that have labels that match the specific regex expression that we pass in. And then we have the opposite of that, which is the negative regular expression that looks for uh, time series that do not have a label matched by the regular expression. So let's take a look at the equality matcher. Let's say that we want to return all time series from a node one. What we can do is we can provide the metric once again. And if you want something from a specific target, you use the instance label. And so we can just do curly braces and then say instance equals node one. And so now when we get the results of the query, it's only going to return all the time series that have an instance label set to node one. And you can see all of the node twos are grayed out, which means they didn't actually get returned. And so, yeah, a equality matcher of instance equals node one will match all time series with node one. Now let's take a look at a negative equality matcher example. Let's say we want to return all time series where the device label is not equal to tempfs. Well, what we can do is say node file system available underscore bytes, and then we say device, and then we do exclamation equals, which means not equals to tempfs. And so the results are going to be anything with a device is set to tempfs doesn't get returned and everything else does in fact get returned. Now, we can use a regex matcher when we want a little bit more of a complicated expression to match on. So let's say we want to return all time series where device starts with slash dev slash SDA, which means we basically want SDA2 and SDA3 based off of the previous data that we had. And so in this case, you can say device equals, and then you do the little tilde, and then you can provide a regex expression. And so to match on anything that starts with slash dev slash SDA, you just do slash dev slash SDA, and then you do a dot and then a star, which means anything after that. And that's specific to regex. And so that's going to return anything that's slash dev slash SDA2 and slash dev slash SDA3, regardless of the instance. And anything else that doesn't match that is not returned. And if you want to learn more about regex, because uh, that's a little bit outside of this course, uh, you can go to this following link right here, and it's going to show you the different expressions that you can use to customize what you want to match on. And then now we're going to cover negative regex expressions. So let's say we want to return all time series where the mount point label does not start with slash boot. So we can say mount point does not, and then instead of equal, it's a tilde, and then you say slash boot, and then remember the dot star means it can be anything after that. And so you can see that the only two results that it did not return was anything that starts with slash boot, which are these two, and then everything else gets returned. Now we can actually combine more than one selector. So let's say we want to return all time series from node one without a device equals tempfs label. How do we do that? Well, you could just separate your selectors with a comma. So we could say instance equals node one and then device does not equal tempfs. So that's how you uh, specify more than one selector. And that's going to return any device that's not tempfs for node one. A range vector selector returns all of the values for a metric over a period of time. And so if you want to return a range vector instead of an instance vector, where an instance vector is going to give you the most recent value and a range vector will get you the values for the past, you know, X number of minutes or the X number of days, you would use a range of vector selector. And what that's going to look like is if we have a node underscore ARP underscore entries metric and we want to get the data for the past two minutes for this specific metric, we would just do bracket and then two minutes. And you can use, uh, and you can go back however far you want. So if you want to go back five days, you could do that as well. And it's going to return multiple values. So this is going to be a range vector. And so you have the values uh, for each scrape over the past two minutes.
Now, when we've been performing our queries and all of the examples so far in the slides, we've been returning the current or most recent value of a metric. So when you perform this following query, you're going to get a value. This is going to be the most recent value for that metric. But what if we wanted to go back in time and get the value of a metric, you know, five, 10 minutes ago or a couple of days ago? And that's obviously going to be a very common scenario because you could come into the office in the morning and find out that you had a little bit of an outage, you know, on Saturday when no one's there. So you want to be able to take a look at the data a couple of days ago. So what we can do is if you want to go back in time, you can use the offset modifier. So you just say offset five minutes, and that's going to get you the value of this metric five minutes ago. And to look at and to see the different time units that it supports, we have uh, MS for milliseconds. We've got seconds, minutes, hours, days, weeks, and years. And so if we wanted to go five days back, we can say offset 5D. If we wanted to go two weeks back, we can say offset 2W. And for one and a half hours ago, you actually have some flexibility for, for this one. We could do 90 minutes, or what you can do is combine two of them and say offset one hour, 30 minutes. And let's say we wanted to go back to a specific point in time. So instead of saying like, I want to go fi back five days from now, what if I have an exact moment in time that I want to go back to? Well, we could use the at modifier for this. And so this is going to be the Unix timestamp of a specific time you want to go to. And this is going, in this case, this happens to be September 15th at 6.06 .06 PM. And this will give us the metric value at that specific point in time. And the offset modifier can be combined with the at modifier. So if I do something like this, where I say, I provide a at modifier to go back to a specific point in time and then uh, offset five minutes, what this is going to do is this timestamp is going to be the time we go back to. And then once we go back to that point, we then go five minutes before that. So this is really going to give us 601 instead of 606. And when you're using both an at modifier and an offset modifier, um, the order that you use them does not matter. So this is going to be equivalent to this. And keep in mind, both are val valid queries. And the offset and at modifiers also work with range vectors as well. So we covered range vectors just a little bit, but when you do the brackets like this, and then two, uh, two minutes in the, in the middle, that's saying we want two minutes worth of data. So normally, if you do this, this is going to say the two most recent minutes. However, since we've added a at modifier, this is actually going to give us two minutes of worth of data at 6.06. .06, and then we're going to go 10 minutes before that. So we're getting two minutes worth of data 10 minutes before September 15th, 2022, 6.06. .06. And you can see the different values over the course of the two minutes. So let's take a look at a couple of examples of working with label selectors as well as modifiers. So I'm going to take a look at the node CPU seconds total metric. And right now you can see that we have information uh, about each CPU uh, using the CPU label and we have zero and one. So there's two CPUs and then you can see the different modes. So if I want to get just data for CPU zero, I can just say CPU equals zero. And remember when you do uh, label selectors, the value has to be in uh, quotations. So I can hit execute and we could see that it's going to give us only uh, metrics that have a label of CPU equals zero. Uh, now, if I wanted to do the opposite where I say, I want to grab every CPU except for zero, I could say not equals zero. And now we get only just CPU one. And if we had more CPUs, it would show all of those as well. Now, if I want to turn this into a range vector so I can get the, the CPU stats for the past two minutes, I can say 2M, and that's going to give us two minutes, and I can hit execute. And now you can see we have all of the data points for the past two minutes for each one of these metrics. And I'm going to remove this for a second. I'm going to remove this so we get CPU equals zero. And if I wanted to get the mode for idle for CPU zero, then I would need to provide two label selectors. So I'll just do a comma and then I could say mode equals idle. And that's going to give me just 
the metric with both of those labels. Now I'm going to change to a different metric. I'm going to grab the node file system files metric. Okay, and we can see that there's a couple of different file systems on uh, our one instance here. And we can see the different mount points. Now, let's say that I wanted to get all the mount, all of the metrics where the mount point starts with slash run. So this one starts with slash boot. So I don't want that. I don't want that. And I want run, run lock, run snap D and run user. How do I do that? Well, we're going to do a label selector and we'll say mount point equals. And we can't just say equals, you know, run. Because if we do that, it's just going to give us one result. So we don't want that. Instead, what we want to do is we want to use a re regular expression. So instead, I will do this. So this is, means we're going to match on a regular expression. And then my regular expression is going to be dot star. So anything that starts with slash run, and then the dot star means anything after it. So it's going to match slash run and anything after it. So now if I hit execute, we can see that it's going to give us all of the ones that have, start with slash run. And if I want to do the opposite of it, so I get everything that doesn't start with slash run, then I can just remove the equal sign and then do an exclamation. And it's going to negate the regular expression. It's going to give me everything that doesn't start with slash run. Now, let's say I want to get this information for the past five minutes. I can do five minutes and then execute it and I'll get this data. Now, let's say I wanna go back in time. So I wanna get this data from half an hour ago. So I wanna get five minutes worth of data starting a half an hour ago. What I can do is offset 30 minutes. So that's gonna give me the data half an hour before that. And that's gonna do that. And if I wanted to go further back, I could say, you know, one hour and the same thing goes. And you can see the, the timestamps getting updated as well. And if I want to go back to a very specific point in time, I can do the at modifier and then provide the Unix timestamp for a specific time. And, you know, what I recommend you do is if you ever want to convert something to a specific time, you could pull up one of these epoch and Unix timestamp conversion tools. You just put a, a specific time in and then just click the convert button and it's going to return the timestamp. So you could just copy this and just use this. And then this will go back to a specific point in time. Now, when you're working with tools like Grafana, you'll may, you'll see that you don't ever have to work with Unix timestamps because they're going to kind of handle that on the back end. But when you're dealing with raw PromQL queries, then you're going to have to get the specific Unix timestamp.